Hello everybody, this is Walrus McFish Sr. and we're here with some more net hack. It's Boregard, the human priest. Hello, Boregard, the human priest. Welcome back to net hack. And so here we are. Uh, you know, I mean, we made it through the early part of the game at least. We made it down to the Oracle. It's kind of like a milestone. It's sort of like equivalent to making it down to the Ecumenical Temple and Dungeon Crawl, I'd say. But, uh, yeah, I hope that you like the game Sokoban. <laughs> Because in this video, we're going to be playing some Sokoban, probably. Come on, let's see the buzz. Oh, we didn't get, didn't get a buzz. No buzz. Yeah, so this is something that's a little bit interesting here. Gush of water hitting the dog in the head. I'm sure he enjoyed that a little bit. He's got nothing to worry about rusting or anything like that. We'll heal up a little bit before we go downstairs. Owl bear coming at us. Okay. Dangerous owl bear grabbed us. Oh no, this is extremely bad all of a sudden. How is how is this owl bear so dangerous? I have barely any uh, AC or anything like that. Let me check my inventory real quick. I hate the fact that I'm being killed by an owl bear right before we want to go play Sokoban. I think this is actually an Elbereth moment. So let's do that. Let's try to engrave Elbreth. I'm going to engrave with my fingers Elbreth. Yes, the owl the owl bear is running away. So, give me a minute. Let me just pause here while this owl bear runs away. Run away, get on with you, and we'll just go downstairs. All right, so that owl bear was a little bit dangerous. I'm not too pleased about that. We're probably going to have to fight him on the way back up, but I don't want to fight him right now. Oh no, and there's a soldier ant. <sighs> We probably got to engrave for the El for the soldier ant too. Can I run away from a soldier ant, or is it too fast? We have the speed boots. No, it's just as fast as we are. We got to try to just engrave Elbereth and probably pray in a second. Soldier ant turns to flee. Okay, so we're in a pretty bad situation here. We got things coming at us from all angles. <sighs> Jeez, man. I sort of feel like I might as well just try to use my scroll of enchant weapon, scroll of confused monster. I mean, these are things that I sort of wanted to save, but like if it's the option is this or die to a soldier ant, I'm not sure exactly what the best idea is. Do I have any other sort of escapes at my at my disposal? I could try using force bolts. I could try quaffing holy water. I think that holy water heals you up. It's a little bit of a dumb use for holy water, but it's also better than dying. I could also pray. I wish I weren't quite so naked right now. If that soldier ant just wants to run away, he's, he's just going to stay there and wait until we die. That's the real problem. I wish I had stayed on the stairs, sort of. I didn't even see him. Those dark blue characters get me every time. It's the dark blue... E of the floating eye and dark blue soldier ant. And a soldier ant is a very, very dangerous foe. Do we have that wand of slow monster? It's an option. I mean, it could be useful, I guess, for dealing with the soldier ant for one second. But it's like, I sort of like want to just maybe... I don't even know what I want to do. I sort of feel like I'm screwed already. Like, two seconds in. So, I hope you don't like Sokoban. We're not going to play any Sokoban. Should I quaff this one holy water just to do it? I mean, I'm going to... Some of you are going to be bad at this decision, I'm sure, especially if it doesn't work. But I feel like maybe I'm going to quaff the holy water. I feel full of awe. It didn't even heal me at all. Okay, the, the ant is running away, though. So here's the real question. What is worse, a soldier ant or the owl bear. Both of them seem to be killing me quite effectively. Um, I don't know. There's still Elbreth, so if I'm standing on Elbreth, these guys are going continue to continue to run away. But, um, I don't know, man. I sort of feel like maybe I should try to step away, maybe cast Detect Monsters, so I know if I'm running into a trap. But I also don't want to just loiter around casting useless spells too much. I could cast Detect Monsters. Let's do that. So there's a whole bunch of killer bees over there. Possibly a friendly unicorn down there. But even a friendly unicorn, if it got too close, I think it might attack us. I'm not sure about that. So we're not, we don't definitely don't want to go over to the west. In fact, I'm sort of feeling like this is almost a total change of plans. I need to get some kind of armor or something so I don't get tore up by these guys. 
I mean, having the conflict is nice. Maybe those killer bees would kill each other, but uh, you can see if they get in a couple good stings, I'm just going to die. So what's worse, getting killed by an owlbear or getting killed by a soldier ant? I think that the slow monster is going to do something against the soldier ant. I mean, with my between my speed boots and hitting him with the slow monster, maybe I can get away. That's sort of my best plan right now. So let's let's go for it. I'm going to step to the that way. Oh, he's still running. So if you want to still go that way, that's fine. I mean, we can't get a good line of sight on him, but he's still scared of the Elbereth for now. Run away, you stupid ant. All right, and now what I'm going to do is zap slow monster just to make sure that I can keep as much distance on him as I can. And hopefully he might ignore me after a second. I mean, I think that might be wishful thinking exactly. Kind of. I, I got to take off this ring of conflict also. Oh, no. There's, there's nothing here. Maybe I should start engraving Elbereth just real quick, just as a preemptive Elbereth. Elbereth is written here, so let me just search a little bit. I mean, searching is going to possibly cause my Elbereth to go away as well. Soldier Ant, you just need to not appear at all, as I just find what I need to find right now. I'm searching, I'm searching, I'm searching. Okay, maybe I should... I'm getting back a little bit of life, but I'm still very naked. All right, I found where I needed to go. There's the way up to Sokoban. All right, so we got to retreat to Sokoban. That is a peaceful unicorn, but I don't want to be wearing this Ring of Conflict. That would be an extremely stupid way to die. So let's remove the Ring of Conflict. That is a neutral unicorn, right? A peaceful gray unicorn. Nice. So one thing that we can do, if you're so peaceful, he is, uh, you know, going to try to, oh, he teleported away anyway. Let's grab a tripe ration. We might be able to tame another dog. Maybe I need to tame another dog after seeing what happened here. And let's go up into Sokoban. There's monsters in Sokoban, but maybe we can just sort of heal as we go. And maybe the monsters won't be as tough as this. That soldier ant is about the toughest thing you could have seen. Um, so maybe let's just go up in the Sokoban. At least we can see Sokoban. At least you can see this questionable design decision, and maybe we'll find some armor in here or something to help us make it a little bit more survivable, a little bit more experience at least. What do we got? Food in here. There's always tons of food in Sokoban, just in case you take a million years to be able to solve it. So do you know what Sokoban is? If you play this game, I'm sure you do. It's kind of infamous. Uh, and if you don't, maybe you know anyway. It's like a Japanese puzzle game. And it's like moving boulders around, basically. You can see there's a bunch of boulders and a bunch of pits. And the idea is you have to push the boulders in the pits, and then uh, then you win. You can cross. You can cross the pits. So we're going to do that. What's this? Some kind of ring. Definitely check it out. It's not cursed, so we'll put it on. Sure, why not? And, um, all right. We need to figure out exactly how we're going to do this. Because, like, the trick is, you know, you don't want to get the boulders stuck next to each other and uh, I could just like look up the solution right now if I wanted to but come on man that's pretty lame you know we can do this you know use your brain power here a little bit you can see just how stupid I am theoretically I've done this a couple of times I know there's not too many of these puzzles so I should be able to like remember them at least somewhat but you know just also applying general good logical principles I think we'll be okay and if you're solving these in a flash and you're getting frustrated fine just skip ahead in the video and aren't you so clever but I think what we need to do here first is like push this one down one. The most important thing is to like just generally make sure you don't do anything too irreversible. So that way, at least if you make mistakes, like you can undo the mistakes. And then if you really have to make a irreversible decision, you think about it. So we push this over here, but it's fine because we can still like push it away. So long as you don't get them like wedged up against the wall or in the corners or like too many of them in a square. Like if we push that other one there to the left, it would make a square. That would be fine. Or that would be awful. I mean, we wouldn't be able to move any of them. So now we'll push this one down here, and we're able to start going. So I need to push this one two down. There's no getting around that. I just need to be able to do that to be able to pass. Okay, there's food in here. Alright, so I do this. And now I check out this food. Slime mold, fine. Tripe ration, fine. Banana, more than fine. That sounds delicious right about now. And now I start getting these things good to go. So what I want to do is push that one up and in so I can do that yeah let's do that I push this one up and then this one in 
and then I can do this. So I can push this one up and this one in, and this is smooth sailing from here, basically. I feel like we we cracked the riddle. <laughs> I don't feel like it was particularly hard either. They get harder than this. What do we got here? Some scrolls labeled Vifforberdine. Forberdine. And we know what these ones are because I, I just know what it is. If I name them right now, these are scrolls of Earth. Name an individual object. No call. These Vifforberdine scrolls, scrolls of Earth. And those are there as little cheat sheets in case you mess up. Then you can create more boulders using the scrolls and push them in for extra boulders. But of course you don't want to do that. No, things that would normally be fine in normal play cause luck penalties in Sokoban to prevent you from cheating like that. So for example, breaking a boulder incurs a luck penalty as well. You might think, oh, you get stuck. Uh-oh, a horse? That could be really dangerous. I'm going to go ahead and zap it with my wand of slow monster. The pony neighs. Were you peaceful? If you were peaceful, I'm going to be sad. Do I have anything that I can throw it to him? A slime mold? Here. You want a, you want a slime mold? Or a banana? Do ponies like bananas? The pony devours the slime mold and is now my pet. My loyal pet. Alright. That's awesome. What are we going to name this this pony? Alright, so you're going to be new Brutus. Which is great. We have a pet pony, which is cool. I could theoretically try riding it eventually if I found a saddle. But you know what? As ridiculous as it sounds, we're definitely going to want this pony to like stay outside for a minute. Well, maybe he can stay. Maybe he should come along in case we have to fight any tough monsters. Having a pony on our side could definitely change the, the tide of this battle. So, okay, we got a pet pony. That's not the direction I thought we were going with this video, but, you know, who doesn't want a pet pony? I mean, Beauregard and his pony. New, new Brutus. <laughs> no disrespect towards you, pony. I'm not trying to say, like, you're replacing Brutus, but you kind of are. All right, now we just need to clear the rest of these boulders. The only reason I'm worried about having this pony along is because it sort of messes with you. You have to make sure that you're not going to, like, block the, the pony's not trapped blocking the boulders. So if we did this now, like, what if we push this? Oh, there's a wand over here, too, a new kind of wand. I'll definitely investigate that in a moment, but I just want to finish this puzzle. Um, Yeah. So this just means if I were to do this, for example. All right, this is fine. I do this, and you can't move, you can't squeeze diagonally through these boulders for some reason, too. I'm not sure how it justifies that. Maybe they're big square boulders. That actually makes a lot of sense if I think about it. If they're big square boulders that are sort of like locked in with each other, you couldn't squeeze past diagonally. Whereas your ordinary boulders that you would find in the dungeon are, uh-oh, there's an ant over there. See, I'm glad I kept the pony. We're going to have to fight an ant at the end of this Sokoban. This is not just, you know, this is not your grandfather's Sokoban here. This is Sokoban where you also have to fight ants. So, watch out. And we're going to let the, the pony do most of the heavy lifting on that one, I think. Maybe the ant will just fall into a pit anyway. And we can try zapping with that slow monster. I guess that slow monster is definitely coming handy. You got to use all the tools that you got at your disposal. See, we, we use the... The wand of slow monster, and like the slime mold to tame a pony to fight for us. I mean, did you expect that was going to happen? No, but you got to think on your feet a little bit. That's what that heck is all about. Oh no, there's a monster back there. This is bad. I I was not think. See, this is what you have to worry about in Sokoban. It's not. Ah, there's a monster right there. We need to hope that he moves slightly to down. Yeah. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Okay, but it's not apparently visible where he is. We should probably wait a second. Hey, monster, where are you? I would love to be able to come and find you. It's a bat. We killed the bat, though. That's good. So I guess we'll just poke our head out this way. I mean, I got no choice but to continue to look. I could try to detect monsters and stuff, too, to hopefully see if... That's an issue. 
There's still an ant situation going up over there, but we're nearly back at full health. All this Soko bonding is good, good to regenerate your life, you know, pass a little time. Pony, make sure, yeah, that's just my pony. Pony, can you get out of the way for a second? The pony makes things a little bit trickier, but also it's just so cute. How can you say no to the new Brutus? You know what? I feel bad about naming you New Brutus. You know, you're going to have a new name. You're going to be called Original Brutus. <laughs> there you go. Now you know that I'm not replacing you. You're, you're the OG Brutus, just as much as the old Brutus. Um, Alright, so we need to make sure that... If, I mean, from here it should be relatively simple, right? We just have to do a little shoot-de-loop here. Move this down here. And it's just the one more. I mean, they give you some spare boulders here. Just in case you run into any difficulties. And now we gotta fight this ant at the end, unless the ant has suddenly vanished. <clears throat> no, he's right over there. Which kind of ant was that again? Remind me. A giant beetle. Actually, these guys aren't so tough. I think they're kind of slow. So I think we can probably take them on our own for the most part. He turns to flee. He's still biting. Giant beetle corpses. Now, are these poisonous? I'm not sure, but maybe we should go for it anyway, just in case it gives us poison resistance. That's a little bit of a questionable decision, but so was drinking that holy water earlier. Ick, it must have been poisonous. Tastes terrible, yes, I agree. But I do feel healthy, so I feel 100% justified in that. I got a little bit of poison damage or whatever. It might have reduced my vitality slightly, temporarily. Next time I pray or possibly get my hands on some other means of curing sickness, I think that'll reverse itself. But uh, now I'm healthy, so now I don't have to worry about that ever again. I can eat whatever poisonous corpse I want, and uh, I won't die from, like, random poison spike pits or whatever. So Pony, actually, I think, Pony, you should stay here. I know, don't give me that look. You should stay here just in case you mess with my Sokoban, all right? And then if I need you for a fight, I'll come and get you, all right? Don't give me that look. Here, I'll throw you another, you know, I'll throw you a banana. Here, I have a banana. The banana misses original Brutus. You didn't want my banana? <laughs> you ingrate. <laughs> Alright, well, you're not. You're definitely staying here now, and you can starve for all I care. Alright, new, uh, new situation here. What's going on? Whole bunch of pits down there. We gotta get some stuff down there. So we need to sort of, like, work our way over there. But it's pretty easy to do that irreversibly, or, you know, reversibly, I should say. I just move it down. I, like, I can get from this room to the other room pretty easily. And then I can push that one through. The problem is, eventually, I need to be able to get that one in. Well, how am I going to do that? Um, good question. The only way is to push that one over, but that would be two in a row against a wall, so I have to push that one over. I know this is extremely... Here, let me let me get my cursor so at least you can see what I'm talking about. Like, okay, so obviously the first thing we need to do is push this one in. So that means that we need to, like, get to that one. We need to, like, get in here. So that means we need to, like, push this one over, and then we can push that one in. Okay, so we just need to get to there. How do we get to there? Well, we have to get through here. Of course, there's a boulder blocking our way. There's a couple of different ways to get past that. We could just, like, push that one through. But that would probably be annoying. On the other hand, we could... push this one... Wow, that would make four in a row. I could just come around this way and push this one up here, and then I could just come through here, and then I could do that. But then would this one be accessible? Because if that one was accessible, then it's sort of like this one and this one sort of like blocking this corner here. Like, I might never ever be able to get that again. But do I care too much about that? I mean, I think I probably have some spare boulders. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Compared to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. I got so many boulders. So you know what? Maybe it's not a huge loss if those two get locked in the corner. So maybe that's my executive decision. I think I should have plenty to spare. All right. It's probably not the cleanest solution, but we're going to do it anyway because, you know, I'm a pragmatic man. We want to do this quickly and just get out of here. All right. Coral ring. That's also interesting. I guess we'll put it on. 
take off my other, no, 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 remove my ruby ring that I don't know what it does, put on coral ring, which I also don't know what it does, but it's kind of neat, we'll put it on, you know, nice change of fashion here. So what was the plan? We're going to do this operation, bust everything up. And, and how did I do that again? Okay, I just need to come down here and push this one up. And I can just push that one up completely into the corner if I want to. But let's just do this. Oh, and I got new kinds of wands, too, and food. Let's uh, let's test out these new wands. Sure. Engrave uh, with the fingers. Elbereth, engrave with this maple wand. Yes, Elbereth. Nothing happened that was immediately visible. So let's just uh, name that, yeah. Maple wand. No, 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 wait. No, maple wand. Didn't do nothing. And now we'll try engraving with this other copper wand. Yes. Right. Floor is riddled with bullet holes. Cool. So I think that's a uh, magic missile. Copper wand. That's a nice one to have. All right, yeah. If we end up in an emergency situation and get some monster that's a little bit out of our league, like an owl bear or whatever, I think having a pony on our side is definitely a little bit of muscle that we wanted to bring to the fight. But also having magic missile, a couple of these wands, is kind of nice. Who knows what that, that other wand is that didn't do anything? I guess we'll have to find out through a little bit more experimentation or just identify or whatever. Now that we get here, I can just do this as I discussed. Push this over here and push this in here. Then I can easily clear this one. All right, and then I can easily clear this one. The rest of this room should be relatively straightforward, right? Nice. And nice. All right, as for the rest of these, what's that, a zombie of some kind? Yeah, dark blue, you thought you could sneak and camouflage here, didn't you? Yeah, we got no armor at all. It's a little embarrassing to be fighting these guys, but we got this. Now I can easily push this one through. Yeah, Elbereth, Elbereth, Elbereth. The reason why you might as well write Elbereth, even if you're not specifically trying to scare off monsters, is because it exercises your wisdom. So, you know, you might as well. Now we can push these two through relatively easily. Good, all right, a little bit of a chain reaction. Those guys had to make a little bit of a sacrifice. Hey, record net hack here. But sometimes you do, you know, that's what I'm talking about with those irreversible decisions. You know, sometimes you gotta make those irreversible decisions and just step boldly forth. And if you figured out the clean solution, you know, good job, you know, maybe I figured it out at one point too. But hopefully that shows you at least that I'm not using spoilers here. <laughs> Try to figure it out ourselves. You know, like the days before the internet. You know, you think you just look up Sokoban solutions on the internet? You know, not in those days. So those, these two are screwed forever. We can get that one if we want to. And I guess we might as well. Let's do it. Yeah. Just get the ones that are easy. And eventually we'll just run out of holes. I don't think we need to need, and use nearly all the rest of these. Like we can start pushing through these ones as well. Good, and just no monsters coming to ruin my day. In a second, I should cast uh, Detect Monsters and see if there's anything going on with that. I could take these two around and just do a little bit of a floop de loop So let's do that. Oh, it's a house cat. I don't think I need a pet house cat and a pet pony. Let's try to fight it. And then if it's... Yeah, it wasn't that hard. We could have tamed a house cat. Would have been nice. But having a pet pony is cool, too. I mean, I think having a pet pony is like even better basically it's vegetarian so it might eventually starve to death but uh, I'm not that concerned about it right now there's always more ponies <laughs> and uh, hopefully by that point we'll be powerful enough that we don't have to worry about needing a pony anyway you know right now we're completely naked and with a lousy starting weapon we need to improve that situation we just wanted to make through Sokoban if we go down into the, into the gnomish mines Probably at the very least we can get like a nice dwarfish cloak. 
or um, something like that. You know, maybe some leather armor or something nice. You know, who knows? Go down to Mine Town. Who knows? You're gonna find down there. There's a booming economy. Doors locked. What do you know? Uh oh, soldier ant. Oh, we're lucky that we got our poison just now. So there are ants here. I think this might be an Elbereth opportunity, or it might be a magic missile opportunity. I don't know. Could be a go back and get the pony opportunity, but that's kind of far away. I should have detected monsters. That's absolutely what I should have done. Let's do magic missile and see if that helps. Hits the soldier ant. Hits the fire ant. Soldier ant, ant bites multiple times. There's so many ants. I gotta try to engrave Elbereth. Engrave it again. Just keep engraving. Soldier ant turns to flee. Oh, but you weren't supposed to flee in that direction. Alright, let's just keep shooting magic missiles at you. If you're gonna be like that. Hits the soldier ant. I'm not sure. It might have worn off if I keep doing crazy stuff like that. Kill the soldier ant. The fire ants are turning to flee, but they're still fleeing in the wrong direction. I could also try shooting some force bolts at these guys. I guess that might as well be a better option. Let's try just a force bolt. What do I do? Because I'm weak. Whoops. Spell misses the fire ant. So let's just eat something quickly because I can't be burdened while I'm fighting fire ants. Maybe I should eat something quick like that banana if my horse doesn't want it. Movements are now unencumbered because I've got bananas. Alright, so maybe I can't cast that spell hungerlessly. Maybe I should just continue to try shooting magic missiles at these guys. It hits the fire ant. I could try to get to that corpse and eat it too if I, if I wanted to. I don't want to waste these magic missiles charges, but it's like, is, is it worth not staying alive? Fire ant, I think, can possibly burn us as well, which is why I'm a little bit worried about that. Unless we somehow have fire resistance from one of our rings or something like that. We'll try another force bolt. There's gnomes here. Killed the gnome. I guess we'll just try more force bolts. You know, fake it until you make it. Hey, that one worked. I hit the fire ant. I just gotta hit it. I guess I'm not very accurate. But, spell misses the fire ant. I might as well just go through my chew through my magic. Hey, that worked really well. Maybe I need to turn into a little bit more of a blasty force bolt shooting mage. I could learn a spell book of fire of magic missile. I said I didn't want to. I don't think I can actually improve this very much. But maybe I should just like keep shooting force bolts at people. There's a lot more monsters in here than I expected. And I am weak and burdened. So let's go ahead and eat a slime mold. Maybe that would have been a good thing to save for my pony. But it's more important that I survive right now. Engrave with my fingers. Let's get another Elbereth going on here. Wolf turns to flee. Good. Should I try to bash it? I hit the wolf. Yeah, let's try to bash this wolf. It's probably the most important thing to kill. I hit the wolf. We're going to enhance that again. I mean, it might be a waste of skills, but I'm most skilled in mace. And who knows how long it's going to be until I get a better weapon. So, you know, for now, I'm going to spend my skill points using mace. Dwarf Lord hurls an orange potion, lands on the dwarf zombie's head. You feel rather tired and I can move again. Okay, so I think that might have been a, a potion of sleep or something, which is um, obnoxious. I mean, it's obnoxious that he would throw such a thing. There's dwarf lords down there, which is something that we would have had to fight. Okay. In the, in the uh, gnomish mines anyway. So you know getting around it. Hit the Dwarf Lord, hit the Dwarf Lord. We killed the Dwarf Lord. Good. We don't need to waste... Yeah, okay. Did you have... He's got a cursed pair of hard shoes. That's annoying. I thought he might have some better shoes than that. Scroll now called Kurnod Well. And a Soldier Ant Corpse, which is probably quite old by now. There's Dwarf Lord Corpse here. We just ate that. Yeah, we just killed that. We can, we can do that. And here comes a uh, stupid wolf. I guess we'll just shoot some force bolts at the wolf. Yeah, we killed the wolf. And finish eating the dwarf lord corpse. Just to, just to make up for the fact that we've been shooting so many force bolts. Alright, we're a little bit low on life. Hopefully we can heal up as we move towards the next level. Uh, unfortunately, no more good armor in here. Cursed pair of hard shoes is annoying. What I am going to do actually is... Wait, was that a regular mummy wrapping? Yeah, I'll take a regular mummy wrapping just in case we turn invisible. That's what mummy wrappings are good for, is if you turn invisible, you know. 
Also, it's good to have some kind of cloak. I guess we don't have any kind of cloak. What I think I'm going to do right now, actually, is take off my speed boots. Feel myself slow down. I know I said I never would, but the reason why is because I'm about to read this new kind of mysterious scroll. New kind of, of scroll. Hear maniacal laughter in the distance. Alright, so that's a scare monster right there. That's a good one to know. I just had a terrifying vision of uh, reading a scroll of destroy armor. And, uh, of course, causing my, my precious speed boots to be destroyed. So it's worth taking them off temporarily just for this. Oh, and we got a slime mold back anyway. So I'll take the slime mold for my troubles. It's a good snack for my pony later. And we'll continue up through Sokoban. Alright, so that was a little crazy. Yeah, it's a mix between Sokoban and action. I like it here. What's this? What's all this then? Alright, so we're down here in the corner. Gotta deal with these ones. Alright, well it seems like I can make a pretty obvious move right off the start. Right? I can do a floop the loop in this lower left corner. No problem there. Delicious egg. I'm gonna eat that egg. Hey! There's an egg that made me feel agile and tough. That's pretty awesome. I'll take it. You know, all the stats we can get. And, uh, yeah, we can just, we can floop the loop this right over here. Try to finish this level as quickly as possible. Maybe I should have gone and got my pony. Oh, also putting on a ring of conflict would have been a great idea there, considering there were so many monsters. Definitely on the, on the uppermost level of Sokoban here, there's going to be a whole bunch of monsters. And we'll put on the ring of conflict there to hopefully make sure that they get dealt with. Uh, okay. So what's next? We, we took out that one. was was pretty easy. Now... I could push that one down, but then it would go into a corner. Hmm. If I were to do this... Oh, okay. I were to push this one to the right... Yes, I see. All right, so this one can go to the right. This one can go down. This one can come around here. This one comes over here, and we do it. No problem. Good, good, good. All right, and then this one can come right down, and we can just floop it around. Good, you got flooped. Good. Good, good. All right. And we come in here... What do we find? Two eggs. I'm going to eat all the eggs that we find. Just because sometimes eggs are like live eggs. <laughs> and if you carry them around in your backpack, they'll actually hatch and like randomly turn into a soldier ant when you didn't exactly want that to happen. So uh, let's not do that. If they were blessed eggs, I don't even know if that makes a difference. But if it were blessed eggs, I, I would consider it. But I can't just have random soldier ant attacks. Not right now. Plus we already have a pony. We already got a pet. So I like that. What's going on here? Um, what's the next thing to do? It's not as obvious as it was. I could push that one up into a corner and get that one, but that seems like it would be silly when we could just come back around and push it down. If we push those two together, that seems like a bad idea. Although, wait, if I push those two together, then that one comes down here. I can push this one down and then get those two. Yeah. Seems like a totally reasonable idea. If I push this one down here, like, let's think about this. I push this one down to a corner, it's not an irreversible move, and I can just get two more. So I think that's sort of a good idea. And then here we just have to come up around the corner. Oh no, we can just floop it in here. Good. And now what's next? So that one we could floop it around, but then it would just sort of be stuck in a corner. Oh, did I actually screw that one? Maybe I did. But, well, I, I feel like maybe we could clear it out more easily if we cleared out some of these other ones first. So what's the next step though exactly? Like, I can push that down into a corner, or I can push it up. That seems like probably a good idea. If I push that up, then I can push that over and then down. 
and then that up and around, no, that doesn't make sense. Oh, okay, but if I push this up, I get it, all right, we push this up, and then this one over and around, it's a Tengu. We're gonna hunt down and kill this Tengu. Hit the Tengu, Tengu bites, hit the Tengu, Tengu bites, hit the Tengu, Tengu bites. Kill the Tengu, we didn't leave a corpse. That's a little shame, I was looking for a Tengu and they're easier to hunt down here in this no teleport level. But uh, eating a Tengu corpse can give you teleport control. It's one of the only ways in the game to get teleport control, which is a useful thing to have, you might imagine. All right, and then I forgot my plan. I forgot my train of thought. No, okay, we're gonna push this around. Yes, push this through this alley here. Makes perfect sense. And then up. Oh no, it doesn't make as much sense as I thought. Hmm, because how am I gonna push it down? I need to push that down and then push that boulder around. That could be arranged. All right, so we can do this. It's just a little bit more convoluted than I expected. I have to push this one down, but not into the corner. And then we can just push this one around. Good. Make sure there's no monsters about. I, mean, I am gonna cast detect monsters before opening the door this time, I promise you. I should just be casting that all the time anyway. I mean, my magic I'm using for force bolts now as well, but here, let's just detect monster. There is a horse, another pony. I could just tame that pony if I needed to, and a couple other monsters. We could probably just set a ring of conflict on them and they would all die, but it doesn't look like there's anything super dangerous right now. I just get scared of those ants, man. The, the, the lowercase a's are a source of many deaths in this game. Don't underestimate them. Now that we got poison resistance, it's a little bit more manageable, but still, I mean, you saw they chewed through our life force as well. What's the next one to do? I guess it will be relatively straightforward to get this one now. Yeah, Rock Mole. He's going to try to burrow. You can't burrow in this level, can you? You're just going to get in the way. And we'll eat the Rock Mole corpse. Because a man's got to eat. Make sure there's no more monsters coming. Alright, I feel like we got a pretty elegant solution on this one. I feel like we could have gotten even those other ones on the side if we wanted to. We just don't want to. <laughs> we'll just get the path of least resistance here. Very good. Alright, so we got that. Any more monsters here? Let's just detect monsters. A couple of Ds and maybe some Us. Let's try without the Ring of Conflict first. If we need the Ring of Conflict, then we'll go with it. Doors locked. Well, I'll just wham it down. Kick it down with my priestly strength. Oh, it's just jackals. That's nothing. Two jackals. There's a... Yeah, another floating eye. We'll definitely be careful about that. Are you peaceful? Like, I feel bad. Like, I tried to slow down that other pony before, just assuming it was angry at me. Yeah, it is a peaceful pony. So being neutral as I am, these creatures of the wild don't necessarily have any beef with me. We could tame them. That's the reason why I wanted to tame that other pony. I hope I'm not stuck with, like, a crippled, slow pony now forever until I get a, <laughs> until I get a, a wand of, of uh, speed monster. I'm not sure if that's permanent. But uh, maybe I did. But I sort of feel an obligation to care for him now. We'll force bolt down this eyeball. We don't really need to eat another jackal corpse. There's a food ration over here. Balsa wand is worth investigating. Albreth, right with balsa wand. Yes. Albreth. Bugs on the floor stop moving. Now that is an interesting find. That could be a lifesaver wand for a couple of reasons. Because... Let's go ahead and name our balsa wand deceptive, you know, I mean, for such a flimsy material. This is either sleep or death. And we can find that out pretty easily by trying to zap somebody with it. But you got to be careful in case it gets reflected or something. You know, we're playing with fire here. Sleep rays are whatever, but death rays can kill you in one shot if you're not ready for it. So let's, uh, let's use that sparingly, but let's remember that we have that. We might have a wand of death in our back pocket, which will kill most things in the game. <laughs> What's going on with this one? Man, all right, so we got some situation here. Hmm. I seem to remember this one before. And I seem to remember it because it's like we're presented with an interesting situation, you know? I mean, the more sort of, like, dichotomies you have, like, the more difficult it is to solve. Because if you can just make, like, nice reversible moves going forward, it's easy. But you can see we sort of have, like, a branching option here. Like, we could push this one in here and come up through here, or we could push this one up through here. 
and then sort of come at it through this way. Now, I remember doing it before, and I remember thinking that we should go to the right. And it ended up working out okay. I don't think it was a perfect, perfect score, but I solved it. And it's like, just like there's too, too much stuff going on up here. Like, if I push it up here, like, it'll just get in the way, like, even more than it is in the way already. So, like, let's just, like, sort of push it to the right. And I sort of, yeah, I sort of want to, like, push it up and then, like, come in from this way. So I don't have to, like, come in this way. You see there's a lot of ugly, like, like, there's too many things just too congested here. If I push too many things here, they're just going to get trapped in squares. I want to be able to, like, get through this way. All right. So let's, here's what we're going to do. We're going we're gonna to do this. Follow my heart. Follow my heart. Follow my heart. Was that a new kind of a blessed glass wand? Okay, well, we're carrying a lot more stuff now. I don't know exactly what that means we should drop. We could make a stash at the beginning of Sokoban. It's actually a pretty good place to make a stash. Um, okay, like, let's check out this wand first, I guess. No, engrave with nothing right over it. Engrave with the blessed glass wand. Engraving on the floor vanishes. That's interesting, too. Uh, Elbreth, I guess. That could be a couple of things. We can find out what that it is easily enough. But yeah, let's name... Last last line vanishes. That could be a couple of things. It could be cancellation. It could be make invisible. Or it could be... Um, teleportation. All of which are definitely kind of useful, actually. So, you know, I mean, we're definitely interested to have that along. But let's go ahead and make a temporary stash right here, just so we can haul this stuff back down later. Like, we don't need five food rations right now, or seven food rations, so let's just drop five of them. Those things are pretty heavy. We're going to have some more to bring down as well. All these wands and water and stuff, too. We can, we can move around in a second. All right. So, now that I've done this, the die is cast a little bit. I should, should sort of push this one up. Keeping everything as irreversible as possible. So I don't want to push it up any further than this. No, not as irreversible as possible. As reversible as possible. You know what I mean. We have to push this one up, but not any further than that, because then it'll get stuck against the wall. So if I push this one up, that'd be fine. But not any further, because then it would make a square. But then if I push this one up... And I can't push left because it would go up against the wall, so I sort of have to go up one more is fine because it's not quite up against the wall. So that's the correct move, I think. Push this up, left, and now I can push this one up as well. Yeah. Maybe. I think. All right, well, I think that's going to be fine. Let's do, let's do it. We'll push this one up. Alright, now we push this one in. Keep pushing. There's another boulder over there? Wait a second. That's not right. That's gotta be a mimic. Right? I'm just gonna ignore that for a second. I think it's probably a mimic. Let's actually go ahead and cast Detect Monsters. I knew it! Yeah, see, it would've been mapped at the beginning of the level there. And we can also see there's quite a bit of nonsense going on there, including a number of, you know... Ant monsters, orc monsters, mummy monsters, all sorts of monsters. But it's guarding very valuable loot towards the end, so we're definitely going to be intrigued to see what it is. Alright, so I've come in through this way. I sort of feel like I've penetrated through enemy lines here. You know, I'm ending in the back, back line here, so that's pretty good. I'm going to, let's see, go through here, go through here. Alright, obviously the first thing that we need to do is move this one, right? This one's in the way. So we need to be able to get to this one and push it up and get it in while making sure that we don't screw the rest of it too much. So I have to take at least one more step to the left. So let's do that to help to visualize the situation. All right, let's see. Man, forethought, forethought, forethought. Got to use my brain here a little bit. What is what we're going to do? Yeah, all right. So looking at this, we need to get to here and push that up. How are we going to do that? We need to get in, like, through here, probably. If I push this one up and then down, I can get to it and push it out. But how am I going to get in through there to get to there? Well, I could push that to the left. I guess I probably have to. I push that one left. 
and this one up, and then I can get through here. So if I push left up, yeah, but then I come in through here, and then I push this one in, and then I come out, but then how do I get back out? Because then those ones are lined up, and I can't push my way out. So if I push that one down and up, um, <laughs> I lost my man. This is this is this one is a tough one, man. They they do get harder. This is the last one, fortunately. So I gotta push that one up and then like maybe this one like down. I'm trying to think. I'll be trapped in there, so I want to sort of be able to like be able to make a floop de loop. If I push this one up, oh wait, if I push this one up, oh wait, I gotta make a floop de loop chamber. I gotta make an artificial floop de loop chamber. So if these six could be a floop de loop chamber. That means I could push this one up. Alright, so we have to push this one. <laughs> Alright, <laughs> I'm getting there. This one to the left, this one to the up, this one to the up, and this one to the down. We've made a floop de loop chamber from which we can burrow our way out. I think I've got it. I think I, I got the keys to the kingdom here. So we, we need to push this one up, this one to the left. Yes. <laughs> this one to the up, and this one to the down. I think we've relatively done it. Yes, check it out. See, look, we made a chamber in here. Now I can push this one to the up, this one to the down. Come in here, push it all around. There's a whole bunch of orcs over there. That's a little bit annoying. It's something that we're going to have to deal with eventually. And now check it out. You see what I was talking about? Like, we're trapped up here, but because of our craftiness we can get it back around. So it's like, here, I can do this one. I can push this one down. And do that, at least. And hopefully this causes a chain reaction where I can get the rest of it. <laughs> um, like, what's the next thing to do? I guess we can push this one up and get that one. Or just this one if we wanted to. Yeah, we can get these two in either order. So let's do that. More orcs over there just waiting for us. But orcs are not that tough. I think we can take orcs. Those little yellow orcs are kind of small fries. We can get this one now. I'm happy about that. That was relatively clean. Can we get the rest of it? We can always come back around, and actually, yeah, why don't we just do that? Maybe there's a way to sort of, like, get my way back around, but we deliberately left ourselves a straight snaking path back through here, and now we can exit through here and just push up from the north. Easy as pie. Two more before we have to fight some orcs. And, yeah, this one should be easy. This is resolved itself, I think. This is just to, we, we, we untied the Gordian knot, and now the rest of it just sort of unravels. One more, and we'll start fighting orcs. Just trying to be relatively expeditious, so... Yeah, so that was not too difficult. This one can just get pushed. Yep. He's got an iron skull cap. That might be wearing. A blessed curved sword. Dust vortex coming in over there. Alright, that's a little crazy. We'll take the iron skull cap. I mean, it's better than nothing, I guess. I think I saw a cursed one of those earlier. It'll mess with my spell casting a little bit, but my AC is just so pitiful right now. Oh, I accidentally put on the mummy wrapping. I guess that's okay, just to have a cloak. But we'll put on the the skull cap, too. At least it's just one iron, iron uh, armor class. And it affects our spell casting, but it's not that bad. We're not casting those spells all the time, anyway. Blinded us a little bit. You can see that when we are blind, we can see all the monsters in the level. That's because of our uh, ESP, which we have acquired. 
There's a hole here. Whoops. That was an accident. <laughs> I accidentally got sucked down through a hole. Whoops. And I accidentally went down to the lower level of the dungeon here. Wait, what did I do? I should continue up this way. Oh, yeah, that was just the peaceful horse. Never mind. I thought I saw my pet. I was a little confused. No, here we are. All right, there's another orc which has made his way in here. Iron skull cap and a cram ration. Sure. Cram ration hits other objects. Fine, it just crashes into all the other food. Tenderizes it a little bit. So we killed that orc, but we fell into a hole or something? No, we didn't. We just fell into a hole. So let's just get this last boulder. Hear a sound reminiscent of an elephant stepping in a peanut. Yeah, that's because there's all those monsters in there. Uh, so let's see, for our last trick, I guess we'll just get this one and step around. There's a number of, oh yeah, we're going to have to get a whole bunch more boulders than this, so we're going to have to clear out the rest of this situation, make sure we did it carefully. And you know, if there's, there's ways to get around messing it up. You could, of course, just take the luck penalty and, you know, strike a boulder with a force bolt or uh, do some other stuff. You know, like uh, create boulders, use the scroll of earth, or a whole bunch of things to try like that. One thing that you can do, surprisingly, without incurring a luck penalty, is using a wand of teleport. So I don't know if that wand that we have is a wand of teleport, but if we did, it would be pretty cool, actually. Because if we really got into a tight spot, we could use a wand of teleportation, teleport a boulder somewhere, and wherever it lands is probably not worse than where it was trapped. So, I mean, that's a sort of your, your one way out to get a Sokoban puzzle. And, uh, let's see. Alright, so how are we going to get the rest of these? We need to get a few more of them. Well, we could get this one if we just deal with the Mimic. So, let's just do that. Wait, it's Giant Mimic. I cannot escape from the Giant Mimic. Whoops. I cannot escape from the Giant Mimic. So, I gotta engrave Elbrith. I can't believe it grabbed me right away. I gotta engrave it again. Are you fleeing yet, Giant Mimic? Elbreth, Elbreth, Elbreth. It should be fleeing. I can't escape. I can't escape though. Um, I hit the giant mimic. It gi a giant mimic is hitting me so hard. Did mimics not respect Elbreth? Oh man, I can't believe I'm gonna die to a mimic right now. Oh man. How do I get out of this? How do I get out of this? I mean, I guess force bolt might be power more powerful. Let's just try hitting it with a force bolt. Fail to cast a spell correctly. Yeah, because I keep messing it up. Misses. Come on, you gotta get this. <sighs> this is huge chomps from this mimic. The giant mimic resists. Oh, yikes. The giant mimic has got some sort of magic resistance. Okay, well, that's annoying. Maybe it's more worth just bashing it. I'm not sure. Any scrolls that we could get here. A scroll of confused monster might be worth using, I guess, rather than dying. Hmm. Wand of Magic Missile, I'm afraid, is just going to bounce back and kill me. I could try the Wand of Sleep or Death, but I feel like that might bounce back and hit me, too. Let's try Confused Monster. Giant Mimic hits, Giant Mimic hits. Alright, so we got to pray here. This is a pray-type situation. Pray, yes. Pray to Bridget. Come on, Bridget. Please. I didn't ask you for much so far. Yes, I feel much, much better. So hopefully now I can confuse this Mimic a little bit. My hand stopped going red. The Mimic is confused. So at the very least, can I get away from you? I pull free from the giant Mimic. Yes, I did. Ha! That's how confused you are that you lost your Mimic death grip. So man, that's cool. Using a, a scroll of confused monster. You want to come just a little closer to me? Six. I know you want to. All right, let's step here. One, two, three, four, five, six. One... Killed the giant mimic in one more shot. So maybe it wasn't completely necessary, but it gave me the peace of mind. Thanks, Bridget. Honestly, Bridget, you were the real MVP in that situation. Helping me out there. Getting me back to full health, honestly. We probably would have died otherwise. But let's detect monsters one more time. Make sure there's nobody clogging up the pits over there. Good. No such worries. Curved sword. Probably a long, rotten... Hill or corpse. Dwarf over here, though. Maybe he'll leave a corpse that we can eat. Delicious dwarf. 
And a hooded cloak. Okay, that's probably better than a mummy wrap to wear. We have the best boots in the game, so you don't have to worry about that. We do have, like, an iron skull cap. He took all my food. This, do we see what I'm talking about? These dwarves, these crazy monsters, NetHack AI is stealing my food. So, uh, let's just take this hooded cloak and we'll take off the mummy wrapping, because that's not doing anything for us. Put on the cloak. Actually doesn't reduce my AC at all either, which is kind of unfortunate. We should have a better cloak. But we don't, not yet. Still, it's just a little bit more of a dignified thing to wear. Curved sword. Okay, so we got to get more boulders. Where's the next one going to come from? Well, this one we could get if we come around from the opposite side. So let's do that. Push it here. Come on around here. Oh, that was a brown mold up there. I hope that's not going to interfere with my ability to push these things. I should go and deal with that situation in a second. So I'll push this up here. Push this. Oh, whoops. That was almost a dangerous mistake. Well, I guess now that I've done this, I might as well come around the other way. Yeah, brown mold. Don't think I don't see you up there. And, you know, those are the most dangerous kinds. You know, the brown molds, they can't move, so it's like they can't get out of the way. I could hope that I have a wand of teleportation and zap them. In fact, I should try to test that out pretty quick. Oh, at least I can kill them like this. But I want to be able to get the corpse. All right, so how am I going to do this? How am I going to clear out this situation? If I push this one to the left, or to the right, seems like the only way to start, basically. And then that is reversible, so I might as well do that. And then I can kill this brown mold. He didn't even leave me a corpse. Ingrate. That means that now we can start to clear out some of these things, I guess. What I would love to do, actually, is this. Push this one down, push that one up come on around. Yeah, that'll work. This is a ring of stealth. Okay, yeah, we'll put that on actually. Take off this other mystery one because who knows what other, you know, what this mysterious coral ring is doing. It could just be aggravating monsters for all I know. But we'll put on the ring called stealth and at least in that way I know I'm doing something. Ring of stealth is actually going to be pretty useful coming up to this treasure zoo over there. All those monsters are pretty sleepy and sometimes you can kill them one at a time. Of course, if they all do wake up, or if they're all awake already, then maybe uh, Ring of Conflict is our best option after all. So come on over. All right, let's uh, push this one over. All right, so yeah, we, we, we got this wrapped up. Cast, tech monsters, nobody at the pits. Although they can appear at any second. That's the scary part. There could be a fungus that appears right there. Or do you see those ant those killer bees? Came out of nowhere. Let's see if I can bash a killer bee. I, it only takes one bash to get them, but it's kind of hard to hit them. Ugh, must have been poisonous. Who cares? Boregard, the poison resistant. And yeah, they all come in batches, too. Like, there's never just one killer bee. Candy bar and a pair of hard shoes. It's a lot of food around here. More food than we really need. Honestly, food has never really been an issue for me in this game. After you get past a certain point, there's just more food rations that you know what to do with. And they're all pretty heavy, so you don't really, like, use them too extensively. Come on up through here... Push it around. Cast. Tech monsters. Hopefully nothing, because there's nothing I can do about it by now. I should have done it more proactively. But I might as well try to... Okay, here comes some orcs. They're right there, though. We'll get them at the end. Cool. So you just come up like this, and then this, and then out like this. Follow the path that we have blazed before us. Feeling a little bit hungry. Mortal orcs coming at us. You'd think those guys would be pretty dangerous, but I don't think they're really that much more dangerous than typical orcs. And, um, yeah, all right. Now we can start to untie this up here. So we can just, like, push this down and then around. And we don't even need, like, any more. The game's like, all right, you got this. You got two spares just in case. Cool. That was a tricky one, though, right? You have to admit, this is a little bit of a brain teaser. And uh, I don't know if this is your sort of bag. A lot of people complain about Sokoban, and it's easy to complain about. I mean, there's only like four puzzles, so it's like once you've seen it, you've seen it, you've seen it all. <laughs> and also, there's like an extremely valuable item waiting for us at the end. I, did, I barely mentioned that. Like, why are we doing this exactly? The answer is because there's like a game-winning item, at least definitely part of your Ascension Kit, 
which is waiting for us at the end of Sokoban. So it's like, you want to go and do Sokoban, unless you're like so annoyed by it that you're just willing to like forego it, or you're doing some sort of conduct or speed run or something. But for us normal scrub tier net hack players, we got to do this. I mean, this is like an essential part of winning the game. And if you really don't like it, you can just look up the solutions and do it in two seconds. But I don't know, it was kind of fun, right? It's a nice change of pace. Two food rations, we got tons more food rations just waiting back there for us. Assuming no dwarves don't nick it. But here we go, coming on up, we got to fight a couple of orcs. Let's just cast one more detect monsters for good measure, just so we know what we're getting into. We're a little bit stealthier here, but remember, we got stealth and conflict. So we got whatever side of the spectrum we want. A couple of mortal or orcs, see what I'm talking about? They didn't do too much. Red-eyed shield is some kind of... Oh, that's a mortar shield, right? Mortar orc corpse, we could... Oh, an Urakai. All right, so there's definitely a strong Tolkien vibe coming over here. HP is a little bit lower than we would like, but we got a new kind of uh, scroll and a new kind of mantle that I believe is a, uh, a, a uh, cloak of some kind. You guys just walking away? I guess I'm too stealthy for them or something? Iron skull cap and a white-handed shield. All right, so that's the Mordor shield, right? The, the the other one is just coarse mantle. That might just be an orcish cloak, though. Take off my hooded cloak, wear the coarse mantle. Which is just the same thing, but worse, I think. So let's just take that off. And wear my dwarvish one, might as well. It's just a little bit higher quality make. And our small shield is fine, because anything more than that interferes with um, spell casting. So I think we're good. We'll just take this uh, gold and scroll. Take off my speed boots. Drop my speed boots and read this new kind of scroll. I feel like somebody's trying to help me. That's nice. It's removed curse. That's a good one to know. More relevant for most other characters than us, considering we have... You know, the ability to see curse is coming. And also, we eventually might be able to learn, like, the spell remove curse. I think that's, like, our special spell that we can cost at lower, you know, penalty. So, I think that we're going to be okay to be able to, like, do that thing. Let's heal up just a little bit more before we go in. We don't want, like, too many monsters to spawn here. But I think we're ready to go. Let's heal up a little bit more. I want to be ready for this. We'll heal up to basically full health. There we go. Seal barking in there. All right, we get it. You hardly think that's pretty stealthy. I don't know how these guys sleep under these conditions. Doors locked. Okay, on the other hand, maybe stealth is not going to be so stealthy if I have to kick down the door. I wonder if I use a force bolt to knock down this door, if that's any more or less stealthy. I could also try just to cast this wand that you called didn't do nothing, just in case it's a wand of opening. Let's try that. No, never mind. Okay, well, let's just cast Force Bolt then and knock down the door. Spell hits the Orc Eye. Spell hits the Newt. Kill the Newt. Spell misses it. Okay, so there's lots of monsters in here. Change of plans. Take off the stealth. Put on the conflicts. Now you can see the true power of the, of the Ring of Conflict here. Monkeys and giant ants and snakes and soldier ants all fighting each other. We don't want to fight all these guys. We really don't. Little dog killing each other. Yeah, we'll just kill... We'll kill some of these guys, and you can see there's just, like, all sorts of mayhem. Like, so much that you can't even pay attention to it all. Urukai picking up bubbly potion. Bats biting Urukais. Monkeys biting the bat. Monkeys missing the bat. Snakes missing the monkey. Everybody's just killing each other. It's like there's no honor or, like, coordination, organization. It's really just, like, a brawl. Attack the bat? No, we don't have to attack the bat. The bat's gonna attack us, unfortunately. Why don't you get back in the melee there while I sort of stand off to the side? I, I want to be able to pass this bat, but I really can't. Like, I wish that the wolves would, would kill him, actually. So I don't have to suffer, like, a luck penalty or something, or a piety penalty. Bat is killed. All right, so we can get back in the melee in a second. There's a pudding over here, though, so let's throw the force bolt at it and see if we can kill it. Kill the gray ooze, and you leave a corpse? Nah, no such luck. Killed the wolf, killed the wolf. There's giant ants killing each other as well. Several objects... Eat the wolf corpse, yeah. Just eat the wolf corpse. These guys will take care of themselves. Here's lizards fighting ants and beetles. Yep. <laughs> Dark potion of some kind is neat. Acid blob is like something that we're just going to throw force bolts at to make sure that we don't accidentally corrode our stuff. Anything else going on here? Snakes. 
soldier ants, more of that. Let's just back off here. Yeah, make sure that we're heating everybody. Excuse me. <clears throat> yeah, you can hear my voice starting to go a little bit. But we're almost done with this video. All right, this is a exciting brain workout, Soko Bon exercise here. And now we've got a big, exciting melee to go on, on with the end of it. Yeah, all right. So the soldier ants are probably the toughest things. I feel like I maybe I should just hurl in some force bolts from the wings. Whoa, a bubbly potion shatters. You smell a peculiar odor. <laughs> to be honest, I don't know what that one is. I'll just say peculiar odor, and maybe I can look that one up later. Or I don't need to look up every little thing, you know? I mean, I try to keep it, like moderate with the spoilers i mean i know most of this stuff off the top of my head so i sort of feel like if i don't know it off the top of my head by now maybe i shouldn't just like look it up force bolt you know i can figure out what a peculiar odor is probably it's not the most relevant thing in the world maybe it's like booze or something but i killed the soldier ant these uh these force bolts getting it done and it's like with the conflict these guys sort of like fight each other get each other worn down and then we just sort of poach the kill at the end which seems like a pretty good idea these guys all fighting each other yeah lots of fighting we just have to like go through most of these. At, at, beyond a certain point with the Ring of Conflict, you just start holding down the space bar just because there's so much message spam that you can't deal with it all. That's a Quivering Blob, I believe. Not anything to be dangerous about. Yeah, hit the Quivering Blob, hit the Quivering Blob. Guys killing each other like crazy. I was hoping I might leave a corpse. That's definitely a good one to know, or to have. And uh, Force Bolt up at these guys. Killed the Green Mold. Kill the spotted jelly if possible as well. I'd like to kill this pudding. Killed the gray ooze. He didn't leave a corpse though, as usual. Did I expect anything else? I'm just happy to have poison resistance, man. That's one of the most important ones to have. All the other ones are great. We're going to get that eventually. But if I know my Sokoban, I think that we're actually very close. Oh, whoops. <laughs> whoops. <laughs> that was a mistake. I accidentally multiplied a gray jelly there. Okay, kill the mold, kill the, hit the blue jelly, dwarf mummy is chilly. I think we're about to get an amulet of reflection. I messed it up. Yeah. And an amulet of reflection is a pretty good substitute for a lot of different kinds of resistances. If somebody hits you with the wand of death or something like that, if there's some cheeky little gnome down in the gnomish mines with the wand of death who's gonna like try to hurt us do bad things to us well then that uh wand of death is going to be completely nullified because we'll have a amulet of reflection which will just bounce it right back at him and that applies for most types of like beam weapons in the game i don't want to get anything rotted we got plenty of magic we can cast as many force bolts as we need basically for a big battle like this any useful corpses little dog corpses you definitely don't want to eat Blue Jelly Corpse, I think, is the sort of thing that would give you cold resistance. Uh, but it didn't. Blue Jelly Corpse, you want to try again? No. Anything else? New Corpse, we can eat that. It's pretty fresh. Feel mild buzz, there we go. A little bit of power. Yeah, it's the old buzz that I remember. Take all this gold, I guess. We'll have tons of gold if we're going to go shopping. I know that we don't have a pet to help steal us any of the stuff anymore. Although we do. We got our crippled pony. So <laughs> there you go. And thousands of gold. So it's not like we really need it. If we want to be like an upstart priestly type, we can actually like buy our stuff. Like, you know, productive members of society. Rather than having our ponies do it for us. What's that? Thin air? It's nothing. All right. Good. Nothing to worry about. Tons of gold. Tons of stuff. Blessed crude short sword. But nah, nothing for us here. And here we go, we get our prize. I seem to remember there being a mimic in that one up there. But in here, we have Elbereth, burned into the floor, so no cheeky monsters take it here. And an octagonal amulet. I'm going to go ahead and name that one right now. No, it is capital Z, reflection. And we're going to put that on and probably never take it off. That is definitely a very good candidate for endgame amulet. So we have the, the property of reflection now. If any stupid gnomes want to zap us, if any dragons want to blast us, we'll be much better prepared than we were earlier. And uh, a lot of stuff in our inventory is a lot better protected too. Like if we get hit with a blast of fire, it's probably just going to bounce off. It's not going to affect any of the scrolls or potions in our inventory or something like that. Is it worth fighting this giant mimic? I say no, considering how hard that other giant mimic was before. I mean, I thought I could run away from it, but I guess it uh, just has the ability to grab onto me right away, possibly. So we're not going to take that risk again. Just continue on my way. Let's grab that food. Oh, well, there's a couple other things over here. Kill the kobold. Kill the zombies. Get used to this. 
Oh yeah, Ring of Conflict. I should probably take that off before I go and deal with my horse. Gassy Spore is something that I'd rather deal with from a distance. Yep. And same with you. Whoops. Spot of Jelly. Kill a Spot of Jelly. And a Potion of Water. Ah, I accidentally blew up a Potion of Water. Hope it wasn't blessed, but even if it was, oh well. Five food rations. All right, that's great. That's all the food rations we really need. We're going to go and drop some of those back at our stash. I fall down the stairs in a dignified fashion. Hey, what up, peaceful pony? This uh, Urukai is a little bit dangerous, but not so dangerous that I'm even going to give him the dignity of dropping my food ration. I'll just eat this. A little bit more money. Gnomish wizard. Somebody moving faster, but you can move as fast as you like. I'm just going to go and... Ravage your homeland in the next video, probably. Alright, jump back over here. Go downstairs. And this was my pet pony, except you're not my pet anymore? <clears throat> Excuse me? <laughs> Are you my pet? Alright, it's a peaceful pony named Original Brutus. I guess I might have neglected him for too long. What? He's, pe he's not peaceful. He's not that peaceful. Alright, here. Take, eh, take another slime mold. I can't believe you, original Brutus. I thought we were cool. All right, come on, Brutus. From now on, you're with me. No more of this, okay? Whoa! Original Brutus biting and kicking. Hey, whoa now. Are you peaceful or are you tame? He's tame. No more of that biting and kicking, all right? None of that. Are you confused or something? What's your deal, Brutus? You come with me, but you don't bite me or you don't kick me, all right? That's a, that's a big no-no. All right, Brutus. I'm willing to give you another shot, but... You know, don't make me regret this. I have burdened. I guess maybe he's just trying to tell me something like, hey, doofus, drop some of your stuff. Climb the stairs, drop some of this stuff here. We could put it in a chest if we really wanted to be, like, really cool about this. But let's, like, drop just some of our food so we can come and get that later. Like, we got eight food rations. Let's just go ahead and drop, like, six of those. No, 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 no. I would just drop, like, five of those. Food rations fell down the stairs. Oh, what? <laughs> Get those. And now drop them here, I guess. We could get a nice chest and have a proper stash here if we want to do so. No dwarves come and carry it off. But I really don't think it's going to be that big of a deal. And Original Brutus, I put those there for a reason. Original Brutus kicks. He's kicking and biting. Original Brutus, this is completely unacceptable behavior. We're going to have to fix this. Brutus, come on. All right. I'm not sure why my horse is biting me and kicking me so much. We might have to just put him down, but... Uh, for now, we've got a unruly horse and uh, an ambulance of reflection. So what do you know about that? All right, I'm glad I didn't die in this video. A couple of times we had to get relatively creative to survive, but we didn't die. All right, that's all that matters in the end of the day, and hopefully we can deal with this other ant up here with Brutus's help and uh, maybe get down to the Gnomish Mines, check out Mine Town. Maybe we'll find the next thing in there that's going to kick our character up to the very next level. So anyway, thanks for watching, you guys. I hope you enjoyed. I'll see you next time.